Use your legs, Taylor. Use your legs. After so many lessons, I got to where I wanted to teach these girls something. You know, I could teach them to ride well. But then the competitor in me really wanted to do something with the kids that way. And if anybody knows me, knows my type A personality. So if I'm going to take these kids and off-site, and I'm going to show up with bridal path horses, and with my name on them, they were going to show up as a professional. That means collars, cuff, western shirts, sponsors on there, girls with their hair tied back. They have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, get themselves and horses ready. And it's not for the faint of heart. If it's cold, you suck it up and you ride because you're a cowgirl. And that's really what I love to instill in girls, you know, and kids. You know, it doesn't matter the weather, it doesn't matter the circumstances. If this is your sport, you do it. You show up and you do it. And the response I've had from these kids is amazing. Just incredible. My name is Angie Hilding, and I've been an owner and operator of Bridal Path Quarter Horses for going on 18 years. And uh, always been a horse crazy girl and had two careers before this, but ended up in the saddle doing this and teaching kids and doing hourly tours, horse boarding, horse sales, and all that good stuff. When I started this, I wanted a rodeo full time, um, but I couldn't afford it, of course. So I ended up having to. Uh, go to work and I could never get off the place and go compete and so I had all these performance horses and I'm I love I'm a competitor so you know as anybody knows in the horse world if you are it's it's seven days a week 24 7 so I thought about it for 10 years before I actually did it after so many lessons I got to where I wanted to teach these girls something you know I could teach them to ride well but then the competitor in me really wanted to do something with the kids that way so I finally did it and we practiced twice a week um, we ride from April through September, and then we go once a month to a competition. And there's four over the season, so at the end of the season, it's on the average. So you might not do very well at your first rodeo, but say you do real well, like a second or third place, and then so over the average of those, all those four rodeos, you might come in with a really good um, winning atmosphere. So it could be first, second, third, and they win buckles, and they win prizes, and they win all sorts of great things. that. Uh, why we do the sport. My name is Katie Gordon. So I'm a riding instructor here at Bridal Path. I've been here for seven years doing private lessons. I teach kids and adults um, how to ride horses, horsemanship, basic horsemanship skills and being around horses naturally. I've always been horse crazy, yeah. My aunt and uncle had horses. So every summer I would stay the summer with them and ride their horses like from morning till night. It was like nine and nine or 10. And then I got my own horse when I was actually 18. So I, that was my own that I bought and paid for. And I showed for a while until I realized that that wasn't the path that I wanted to be on. It was kind of boring to me. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned my horsemanship skills from showing um, because when you show, it's very proper. It's very meticulous of where your shoulders are, where your arms are, where your legs are, how to move your horse. So I learned a lot from that. And then from there, I bought my rodeo horse and then I started doing barrel racing and rodeo when I was 19. When I was about eight years old, um, I used to ride this property as a little kid. I mean, we lived in Hayden. I'd ride my horse from like Hayden Avenue 
and more like closer to 10 probably. But back then things were different, right? I get on my horse and my dad would say, come back when the street lights came on. So um, my mother was never into horses, but a big supporter. And my dad was, is, is a team roper. And I just was always surrounded by it. I took it to the next level than anybody did in my family. I was telling this story the other day to one of my students. Um, my mom has a, pi a picture of me at three years old in braided ponytails. And I'm barrel racing at a rodeo right here in Rathroom, the old singer rodeo. And my, my t-shirt says first class brat. Now, isn't that funny that now I have a, yeah, a business called the Brats. <laughs> but 18 years, still here and still operating and, and loving it. The BRAT team, uh, we start at eight and up. The program can stay with certain kids depending on their skill level and their advancement. Sometimes they stay with the program five years. If they buy a horse and they progress and their skill level gets more, then we gotta kick them out of the nest. I mean, that's just how it is, right? So we have four events and there's barrel racing, pole bending, um, we do roping on the ground and then goat tying. Those four events, that's how they can stay in the average with the competition. They might do real well in one event, not the other, but at the end of the year, they have an all around average. So um, we practice all of them for a month and then we compete. And barrel racing is a clover leaf patterning in an arena. So you have a barrels like you have um, three. So you do a clover leaf of right turn, left turn, left turn. And it's timed, it's a timed event. Funny thing about the speed events that we teach, we teach it all slow. You have to slow down to be fast. You know, you go out there and try to be fast and be the hero, you're going to screw it up. So they come with me and they get the experience. And whether it's the experience of riding a good horse or the experience of being able to travel. And I pretty much stand back and say, this is your day. You have to do it all. And then when they compete, you know, they get they get the highs of the win and the lows of the not winning are just totally blowing it. No participation prices in this, in this place, though. Um, and that's just part of it. You know, you want to get better and work harder at it. You always know when a kid really has it in them because um, it's 10 degrees and they can't wait to come out here and shovel the frozen manure. I always know what girls are really going to take it on outside of lessons. And so fortunately, I have two of my best students I've had over the years, Kylie and Amber, and uh, they're eight, 17 now and they started at seven and eight here. And here they're working for me full time and do an amazing job. They don't know any different than the right way. They're raised that way. They started as really young students and they were so passionate about it that they were here on their days off or school or after school and they were doing barn days. They don't look at the clock. There's no like nine to five, it's 6 a.m. to whenever we can wrap up. Well, Kylie and Amber say I'm way easier now. In fact, they'll come into lessons because I kind of make them graduate. They get to a point. Alyssa, she's graduated. She actually won both of my timed event saddles that we put on last year. And she came for a practice one day for whatever reason. She goes, I don't know who you are, but you are so nice compared to when I was that way. And she goes, that's why I'm good because you were mean to me. Get meaner on these kids, is what she said. So the girls always say, I'm, when I grew up, I want to be a brat. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, work hard and you'll get there. I was at an event with a bunch of my current students and she showed up there and I looked over and I seen Alyssa and I knew she was my kid, but I, she was out of place. And I said, Alyssa, what, what are you doing here, kiddo? She goes, Miss Angie, I just had to show up and watch because I'm just dreaming of being a brat. You know, if you hear a kid say that unless you're oh, in the program. Yeah, so um, I would get a daily text of her dreams that she'd had the night before, or running through a pasture with her wind through her hair, that genuine little girl stuff. She was seven. She started with me her first writing lesson here. And now she goes to Arizona and competes and she rides every day, seven days a week, homeschooled so she could ride full time. And very competitive and wins consistently. Well, how's it been uh, with the truck after we changed everything? Great. 
Yeah. It has been great. I yeah. notice it most in Arizona because I, of course, I drive more down there. Yeah, what'd you notice? So the roads down there are so different because they have like wash roads and they're up and down. But when I hook up to that trailer, I have to go like on my side roads and the wash roads. And that's when I notice it the most. And I didn't have so much give and I didn't have trouble stopping. But uh, I guess the word I could probably put to it is um, I felt more secure. Or what do you, what, what difference is? I suppose the difference is just, I'm not moving. Mm. That's the biggest thing. And yeah. this trailer is so ridiculously heavy that it, it's no fun to drive this trailer, mm. especially 22 hours to Arizona. Not, not to mention the four 1200 pound horses we put in it to get down there too. We were going um, to a barrel race over the weekend. Um, I had to pull my girlfriend's living quarters very heavy, 18,000 loaded. She has airbags on her truck. So we unhooked her truck and trailer and I backed in, hooked up my truck uh, with her trailer. And my husband looks at me and he goes, oh, I guess we're gonna see how much our bed goes down. And I said, ah, we'll have to see. And it never even budged that bed. <laughs> I love the smile that I can put on people's faces just on the basic skill of just walking or trotting a horse or even loping for the first time. That is something that I'm teaching people that is a special bond. And it, it's, it's pretty amazing that I, I share that moment with those people or the kids, with the adults or the kids. And it's something that will probably be forever embedded in their brain. So it's, I hold dear to that. And I think that's why I keep doing it. I'll literally be standing, filling a water trough, you know, um, checking my emails, Facebook, what have you. And then I'll look up and I'll look over that 20 acres and all those horses and, and the sun's just right or it's setting or rising and go, wow. I am so lucky. It's so easy to get caught up in the, the beat feet of every day. Um, but you know, I get little girls that come here and they're so excited and this is what they look forward to. And, and I get people that's their bucket list and they get to ride a horse. And, and then I have those on, on the other end that are competitive and you can make them better and step them up. So there's so many variety of, of what is endless here at this business. I got the best job in the world. I really do. 